Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter, and I'm here with a tutorial that should have actually launched a couple of weeks ago, although I've been dithering and conjuring about a certain element of the build, and I'm going to share that with you now. But before we make a start on my stumbling block, should we call it, um, let's tell you what we're going to do. We're going to make um, a Halloween journal and it's going to be using Tracy Fox products. As you know, I don't use a lot of digital printouts because I like to challenge myself in other ways to make my own pages. But occasionally something comes along that absolutely is fit for purpose and I'm like, yes, I'm going to use it. Now, you may have remembered, sorry, this is my project box. You may have remembered Back in June, I did a collaboration with Tracy Fox called uh, Creep on June, I believe it was, where I made all of this ephemera. Now, I'm going to sh uh, put a link in the description box of the video where I made these. This was a kit for making um, matchboxes um, in a Halloween theme, and I adapted it to making into masterboards. So I wanted to show that I could take one thing and made it, make it into another. Now... Let's see how I've got the actual kit over here. I have, right. So this is the kit. It was called Halloween Mega Matchbox Minis. It's by Tracy Fox. Tracy Fox has Love Junk Journals on um, Etsy. I will try and link this kit, but if I can't link the kit, I will link her shop in the description box below. I'm not going to flick through this because to be honest with you, you'll see it when you see the other video. So that was where I took all the ephemera from. I have gone through and I've fussy cut a lot of it so that if I do need other elements, I've got them ready to go. So that's to one side. That's a resource that we can use. Then I contacted Tracy because I wanted to actually make um, a Halloween journal. To be honest with you, I wanted to make a vampire journal, but I think that's going to have to be put off till next year because I just couldn't find the right stuff or the stuff that I wanted to use in it. So I contacted Tracy Fox and said, Tracy, do you have anything that will complement your matchbox? And she kindly sent me another digital. And this one is called Dark Compendium. It's not written on. Oh, it is written on there. There you go. It's Tracy Fox Creative Dark Compendium Kit, uh, Dark Compendium Mark IV. Now, what I liked about this was a lot of the elements you'll see in this kit are actually images that you'll see in this kit. So it all perfectly marries together. So if you're going to get one, you might as well get the other. Is this the way my brain went anyway? Now, I've taken this kit. And I'll do a quick flick through with you, although, to be honest with you, Tracy will have already done a flick through on her channel. But what I've done is the papers, I've actually done them back to back. OK, so I printed them back to back to give me pages for my signatures. So I'm going to flip them so you can see what they look like. I am going to do this quite quickly because I want to get this video made as one video I don't want it to go over into two videos because it's only a small journal I'm making and I don't see the reason why I should need more than an hour especially as I've got all of the um, ephemera already made so as you can see I I took the pages and I took the collage pages as well I back back to back them just to give me enough for the kit so that gave me 10 pages for my signature when you see how I'm going to do this I think 10 pages is enough because Halloween is only once a year I don't know that we need a huge expansive journal to do it in and I've got quite a lot of ephemera to go into this so effectively it's going to be quite a chunky one so put those to one side because they're our, our signature then in that kit you also get all of this as well which I'm not using in this kit uh, because I've already got my ephemera made. But as you can see, there's loads and loads and loads of other things like background papers, tags, even little mini ones, which I love the little mini ones. And it's it's here. So if I do run out of stuff, I very much doubt, I can always pop into this and actually take something from it and move it into something else. I mean, there you go, just little tiny accent pieces 
round ones. I always struggle with round unless I've got a round punch that's exactly the right size. So this will be a resource so I can dip into as well. And if I don't use it this year, it'll get fussy cut. It'll put, put into my box, be ready for next year. Now, I just want to mention one more thing because there's another kit Tracy released. Ooh, might be last month, maybe the month before. It's called Tracy Fox Creative, which is Tea Party Folio. Now, it's actually a kit to make a folio. Now, I have the kit, but what I did is I didn't actually print the whole kit. I just printed off the witchy tags, which I absolutely loved. The colours are stunning. The whole folio is like this. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But I knew if I was going to be doing the Halloween journal, I wouldn't have time to do a folio journal. Now, I know Tracy Fox has a video on how to create this folio, which I'll also link in the description box below. And she showcases the whole kit. But if you're into the colour purple, those are absolutely fabulous. Just want to share them with you because I thought those were incredible. Right, those will go again into my stash of tags for a future journal. Now, as I said, I've already prepped these as far as printed them double-sided. Because of the way my printer works, my printer doesn't do borderless printing. It actually always prints a border, which means that my signature pages for a dig dig digital are ten and a half by seven and three quarters. So as you can see, this is a normal um, British A4 sheet. So it's smaller than that. And that actually worked in my favour because it makes the journal a little more compact. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one of these on screen and I'm going to pause you and do the whole rest. I just wanted to show you one because I'm, I'm not into repetitive processes for filming. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a metal ruler and I'm going to come down the sides of here and I'm just going to remove. Now, I want to tear the pages because even though it means I'm still going to have a nice, nice edge, or I would if I tore it properly, um, I'm going to ink the edges as well. And because I'm tearing them, it does mean that the vintage photo distress ink that I'm putting on there will actually um, make the edges of the page just a bit darker. Now, if you're printing back to back, if your printer is anything like my printer, turn your page over to see whether it lined up and it didn't line up on this side. OK, so I can't always guarantee that my printer will align everything for me. But as this is a bit of a rugged journal I'm trying to create, I'm not bothered. So this will be the actual size of my page. And then I'm just going to come in with my vintage photo distress ink. And I'm going to come around the edges because I want to darken this up. I did toy with the idea, shall I do the edges in black? But I decided, mm, no, we won't do that. So I don't know why I just decided I just wasn't, wasn't in the mood for black edges. And you'll see why when I show you what the cover is going to be. Now, therein lies the problem. For me, the cover has been the one thing that's been holding me up. I obviously know how to make covers. I can do covers out of fabric, recycled packaging. I can do them out of envelopes. I can do them out of gel prints. I can do them out of craft card. I, I can make them out of pretty much anything, but I really, really struggled with the idea. So and put that to one side. So anyway, that's how I'm gonna prep my pages. And then literally each page is gonna get folded in half. And this, this will be what the pages are. Now, these pages are not going to have a lot of writing space on the pages, but you've seen the amount of ephemera we've got. The ephemera will have writing spaces on it. OK, and if I feel that one of these pages maybe is a bit overbearing, I can always put in here a panel of coffee dyed paper to actually then um, give me more writing spaces. So. So when I pause, I'm going to take all of these pages and do this with them. So on to what my struggle was with the cover. So I struggled and struggled because I was trying to work out how I wanted to visualise this entire journal. 
And it was only when I was going through all of my stash of stuff, I came across this. Now, I bought this and it's been shared in one of my um, charity shop or thrift shop hauls. It's a book cover to go onto a book. Like you, you get you get a notebook or a book and the covers slide in here and then it makes it more of a journal type thing. And when I saw this, I liked that with it. And the reason I like this is because, you know me, I, I like to have a story behind most of the things I created. And I wanted to create something that would be, say, a man or a woman is someone who's studying witchcraft and the activity of witches and Halloween. They wouldn't be advertising it by having that written all over the cover. So I wanted this to be something. I wanted it to look as if it might be something that's thrown in and out of a bag. It's a notebook. It's a research thing. And I wanted to keep it quite plain. I am going to come in before we actually stitch up and I'm going to come in with some probably archival inks in black. And I'm going to dirty this up a bit so it's not as as perfect as it looks now. If there's room on the spine, I might actually put a dangle on there. If not, there might be dangles in the middle. If I feel it appropriate, which I'm not sure I'm going to, is I could even stamp onto this. This is suede. I don't know whether it's real suede or faux suede. To be honest, I couldn't tell you if... I think that's probably faux suede. In other words, it's fake suede. But whatever it is, I liked this. It's one of those you'd expect someone who's a witch hunter or a, a journeyman or something. This would be what they'd have. It would be marked. It would be weathered. It would be thrown in their satchel. It would be thrown in their backpack as they frantically made notes on what they found. So that gave me the key to this. So I'm going to pause you. For you, it'll be two seconds. So that's all the pages torn and they're all... Um, distressed on the edges. As you can see, I've got them in, in some sort of order. When I was going through them, I did decide to add a couple of sheets of um, coffee dyed paper, and it was literally a couple of sheets. Slightly annoyed that fold didn't cut his head off, but you know what, once stuff's on there, I'm never going to notice it. Um, so I wanted to double check they're all facing the correct orientation. They go, there's that other bit of grungy paper. I really liked how that went with this. So, and I came across one other thing that I thought, oh, I'd really like to add to this. And that was a piece of lace. So I thought I'll stitch that into the spine. So I just need to find a page that's potentially, I've got a feeling I quite like the idea of the lace over the lace. Mm, no, I don't like the lace over the lace. Do I like the lace over that lace? That. Is that the right way up? I can, oh, that's the right way up, I think. Hmm, finding the right page is going to be the issue. Actually, that looks like the right page. So, um, my signature is all pretty much ready to go. I just need to make sure everything is together. Need to make sure that piece of lace is all the way down because I don't want to have to try and adjust that afterwards. So I've checked it's all in the right orientation. That piece of lace will actually be a substitute for a fabric flip in here. Right, I'm just going to clip this together while we take a look at the cover itself. Now, I also pulled out a couple of these pages, which are coffee dyed paper, which have got a little bit of grunge on them from where I coffee dyed them. And I thought if I do want to put a panel on the back of some of those patterned pages for writing, then I've got this. Or I could fold these up and actually slip them into a pocket to have more writing there. So we have our cover. So first of all, I don't want to destroy this this cutting surface because I like it. Now for me it's a little bit too orange but it is sort of the right feel and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some archival ink and I think we're going to try this on the big inside first and I'm just going to rub it as if it's it's seen some days, it's seen a bit of weather, it's been in and out of a horse's saddlebags, it's, it's just it's had a life. So I envision the person who owns this has been on the hunt for something 
for a long time, like witches or witchery or um, may, maybe one of their relatives was kidnapped by a witch at some point. Um, or maybe they were enchanted and and they want to try and get the spell broken. Who knows? You, you know the way my brain works. So that's a lot more grungy. I also came across, this was a little bat stencil I got sent by Pierre Martis Studio in my latest order. And I'm just going to try this on the inside at the back because I don't know whether it's going to work or not. I'm going to use a little brush and see if I can actually stencil a bat on here. And if I can, which I can, I think we'll have a couple of bats dotted around the cover. I don't want to make it look too juvenile, should I say, or infantile. But I do, I do like the idea that there's something on there. So maybe it's just little, little touches here and there. Um, I don't know whether you can order these bats. Um, from Pierre Martyr Studio. I'll have to have a look on their website and see if, if they've got them there. Um, if they do, I will drop it into the description box. If it's not in the description box, maybe they just made it as a freebie for Halloween for those who ordered. Now, I also think I'd like to put a bat on here just to finish that off. OK, I'm happy with that. Right. It's it's not too over the top. It's still got that subtlety to it. I quite like that bat to be a little darker there. I can just go over him again. I was being a little bit too cautious. Right. So that's given me my weathered and battered looking cover. Let's put the lid on that. So the question is, will the pages fit within it? I'm certain they will. I'm hoping they don't have to trim them down. Right, that's a nice fit. I don't have to trim these down. That gives me a nice fit in there. I've got a nice space down either side. It will bulk up. I could put lace into it if I chose as well. Um, I'm happy with that, where that's going. It's also given me the opportunity by using this of being able to tuck ephemera in here. So if I've got spare ephemera at the end of it, I can tuck it into there. So I think we're at the sewing in stage. So I'll slip that over there so I don't lose it. Right, we've already been through all of the pages. I know they're correct. I know they're in the right orientation. I know they're in the right order. What I need to do now is they may all be in the right order and everything, but I want to make sure they're spaced evenly on here. So just got my finger there, just to make sure that it needs to come a little further over here. Now, I'm going to clip this a top and bottom with, I call these bulldog clips. I'm, I think you guys call them something else in America. Um, I think you'll call them file clips or something. Not that it matters, you're seeing a visual of them anyway. I just wanted to make sure that the edges joined up. They would, right. Not that that's hugely important. Because at the end of the day, it's going to fatten up, it's going to get rounder. I do want to make sure that I've got it all clipped in place. Um, you've probably seen me do this many, many times. I'm trying to push the spine into the spine here. So when I sew, everything's nice and even. It's a little trickier when you're working with a soft cover, as this is very much a soft cover, as you can see by the way it's moving around. I would say at each stage that you get things clipped in, try to double check that things close properly. They're not distorted. Right, that's obviously not right there. I think something's gone awry somewhere. These are the things you have to do, guys, just to make sure that it's it's all hunky dory. I'm trying not to twist it as I clip it. As I said, it's tricky when it comes to a soft cover. Maybe do it. I normally do there, there, and there, and there, but maybe this time, because of the way it's moving around, 
I need to actually do it top and bottom. Right, that's not buckled. Once that's done, it'll be fine. I'm, the bit I'm important to me is that's down there. The rest I can deal with. Right, let's clip those down. Now, um, choices for sewing this in. I'm going to use black thread because I think black thread will work. All of my other threads are actually going to just be too, too bright. I don't intend putting anything down the spine. I wonder whether I could use that, actually. I might change my mind and use that. I mean, part of me would really like to use something like um, twine or a heavier thread or even punch it at the top and the bottom, put an eyelet in and tie it with a leather thong on it. Um, but I haven't got those here, so we're not doing that. So, right. That's an all AWL. So I punch my holes with, um, I've got a needle that's got a reasonably large hole in it, not because I can't see it, but for the simple reason, the thread is thicker. Right, where's that scissors gone? Okay, now I'm gonna do three lengths and a bit. So that's one, two, three. I don't mind it being too long. I'd rather the thread be too long when I have to trim it than the thread be too short and I have to undo the whole spine and do it again. Right, as soon as I cut the thread, I put it onto the needle and I do that purely so I don't lose the needle. Right, now, I'm not gonna mark where I punch the holes, I'm just gonna punch the holes. I've got a book that I'm gonna punch the holes through into. There is a gadget out there called a book cradle. So if you do a lot of journals, it's like a V-shaped piece the spine sits into. Um, I just use a book. So I'm gonna fold the book so it's almost closed. I'm gonna press right down through into the book below, about half an inch to three quarters of an inch from the top. Same thing there. I like to turn it round to do the other way. You close the book up so that the, the awl goes all the way through and comes out of the spine. Now we're going to struggle slightly because this is not paper, obviously. So I just want to make sure that the hole is big enough for me to get the needle through and back through. And as things are going to be moving around, we're going to struggle slightly. I shall warn you that before we start, so you don't think I'm being very inept. It's going to be a struggle. So I'm only using one thickness. Now, I could do the going from the inside to the outside, which means that the knot will be on the inside. If I reversed it, I would have the knot on the outside. So I'm doing a basic three hole pamphlet stitch. I'm gonna go out through the middle, out to the back. I'm gonna make sure I've got some tail in here because I'll need some surplus. I'm gonna come all the way down here to the bottom, which I've already lost the hole. At least that's one advantage of having fabric. I can move it. So pulling it back through there. So this is your basic one hole pamphlet, a uh, three hole pamphlet stitch. There are a couple of ways of doing this, however. This is my preferred method. So out through the middle, in through the bottom. I go back out through the top. That's probably where you'll see a variation if you see someone else do it they will probably go back out through the middle. I choose not to. Now, because you've got a thread in this hole already, the tail that you had here, make sure that's pulled quite taut because you do not want to split your thread going back through. And the reason you don't want to split your thread because if you split your thread, you won't be able to tighten the spine up. Right. Just wanted to make sure that's okay. Right, now you will see here that my thread is on one side. So I'm gonna take the needle and thread it underneath it so it's on the other side. I'm just gonna take the cotton off the needle. This is um, 
wax thread by the way it doesn't have to be wax thread uh, I would say just use a heavier duty thread than you would normally use I've actually sewn in before now and I've used um I've used dental floss before now I've used heavy thread um there are certainly different ways of doing this uh, did I thread through that I think I did split my thread after all I sewed through the actual thread even though I said not to so now I've got this, I can tighten. If you find you can't tighten it up, you've probably sewn through your thread. It's an easy enough thing. Just take the thread off the needle, pull it back through, re-thread the needle and go through again. So you're looking for this to be fairly tight. Okay, so I've come in, made sure it's tight. I'm going to give this one good pull. I now, because it's a fabric spine or a soft spine. If you keep on tugging this, the book is gonna buckle in. So make sure it's, it's firm enough, it's tightly done, but not so tight that you destroy the book. I like to give three knots. That's just my OCD coming into play. And I'm gonna leave these hanging down. Probably not that much, however, because I've got a feeling I've got like little Celtic charms somewhere. I might even have a bird symbol because in this kit, crows play or crows or ravens or rooks or jackdaws, whatever they do, play quite a large part in this kit. We've got that started. Now let's pull in our ephemera and see what we've actually got. Um, so that's a pocket, that's a pocket, that's a pocket journal card pocket now these two are made to be together so that's a belly band um with a card in it now i need to make sure the belly band fits on these pages because these pages are smaller it could be that i have to adjust this by snipping part of it off that may mean that this may not go behind it but we'll sort that out afterwards so that's a journal card journal card journal card out you come um, corner tuck, so I'll put that in the pockets. Journal card, tag, tag, tag. There's lots of tags. That's good, actually. I'm quite happy there's lots of tags. Another corner pocket. Now, I did pull this out because this is one of the sack and tag things I make. It had a bit of this ephemera on it anyway. I'm not sure I'm going to be doing this, but if I have time, I will. I also have some of the black lace, and I found red lace, but I was putting the kit together for... Um, what was I putting it together for? I was putting it together for a vampire journal, so that won't work. I did pick up some of these chalk um, labels in um, the States when I was last over there, because I had a fancy I was going to put one on the inside of there. Not sure now. Um, I don't know. Those may get used for something else. So let's have a little play and see where we can position these before I grab my glue said blue and start sticking things in now um push the tags out of the way push that out of the way so if i've got a corner tuck in the first half i'll have one in the second half now i'd like to put these more on the patterned pages okay that'll go there so that means i'll come to the back and i'll put the other one in the back which is fine because they show up really nicely. Right, this is just me and my methodical mind, guys. This doesn't mean this has to be done this way. Right. Um, I don't like that there. Actually, that's quite good because this is actually, this one's better. It's got maroon on it. I like that. That would be a nice tuck there. A pocket there, I mean. Let's see if I can find the one on this side. One of these has got, that's got red in it. Right, now this can be used as a side pocket, which is fine with me. So let's move on a little bit. Maybe that'll go there. Let's see what the other side of that looks like. How close to that is that? Actually, I think I'd like it on that side. Right, let's see whether this is going to fit. Right, I'm going to have to take a bit off this. So let's just get my scissors. Now, everything is glued down, so I'm quite happy about that. So I might well take it off the bottom instead. So it's a 
just about there. I don't mind it being ever so slightly shorter than the page. That'll be fine. Right, now I need to find a page for this to go on. Now, there are a few pages in here that are nice, but are not my favourites. Like, that is one of them. And having that over the top, it would really help. Now, this is now too big, but would that fit? There you go. That I like that. That goes inside the inside cover. So that means I'll have to find something else to go into that that belly band. So I think we're at the point now where I just need to stick some things down purely so I can work from there. So I'm using Art Glitter Glue. Use whichever glue works for you. I like to use Art Glitter Glue because it's quick and it's strong and it grabs really quickly. Now I'm not going to put this absolutely on the edge. I'm going to come in just marginally and give it a bit of a press for a second and that'll be fine. So that will end up with um, something in it. Now I can turn some of the journal cards into tuck spots should I choose. I'm going to turn this slightly. It's a little easier for me to work then. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to put top and bottom. Try to get it straight. Is that straight? That's as straight as it's going to be with me, I'm sure. Right, what was the next bit? No, no. That's where the, I like. I'm glad I sewed the lace in there. That that feels right for that page. I do want to do something about that. I've got, I actually pulled out um, a pile of Tracy Fox's labels that are digitals that I use all the time, just in case I have that sort of scenario. So I can cover it up with one of those. Right, this was over here. So that's the joy of actually making your ephemera ahead of time or having a stockpile. Now, I normally have, well, or normally, I do have a box full of ephemera that I make. A lot of it, though, I make and don't completely decorate it because I like to wait to find which journal I'm going to be putting it into. So in this instance, I very much doubt I've got anything that would go in this because that's just, this is quite a unique looking journal in that, actually, no, I've got an idea for that one, right? This was a side tuck. Um, I always put the notch in so that I know um, where the element that's going to be slipped in is slipped in. So yes, I do make ephemera ahead of time. I tend to mass make it. I tend to get it to the point where it's almost ready for use, but I leave space so that if I want to decorate it further with pieces from the kit that I'm using, or maybe if I'm making my own art pieces, I want to decorate it with those, then that's that's fabulous because that's how, I, how I've got space then to make that tag, that journal card, that element part of the project I'm working on. I was so pleased when Tracy said she did have um, signature pages and collage pieces and ephemera to go with the Matchbox kit because I'd made some, but I thought, oh, how am I going to, how would I take regular coffee dyed paper and turn it into something that looked like that without just basically sticking a whole load of elements onto the page? I would have struggled. I would have done it, but I would have struggled. Let's go on the back of here. Now, as I'm just gluing in at this point, guys, by all means, feel free to fast forward. I'm never insulted. Why is that? Because I never know that you fast forwarded. Which I'm glad to put that in there because that sort of hints at that, which I didn't purposely see, but... Sometimes it's called serendipity, has something to do with things.
There's a lot of gaps back here with nothing in them, right? Um, so as I said, I can turn some of the journal cards into tuck spots, which I will do in a minute, to be honest. I didn't realise I had this many gaps at the back. Now, some people have a personal guide, like I know Gail Augustinelli has a personal guide that she usually puts six pockets or tuck spots in the front of the journal and six in the back. Um, I don't. I go with my gut feeling. Right. So, so I wanted to put another something in here. So if I pull these in, let's pull all the tags out of the equation. Which is the bigger? That's the bigger, right. So that could easily become a corner tuck. So let's see if I can find something towards the back of this book that actually calls to me. Actually, that calls. Actually, that calls to me. But is that lace going to be stuck with it? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Actually, there, there's burgundy there and there's burgundy there. I'm quite away from that one. So how do I want this? I want it that way. So I'm just going to glue two sides. And that will then give me a tuck spot so I can slide something in there. Right, so everything is in there so far. Now I still have this but my problem is as you can see it's a bit big for the page um, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to use it. It may mean that I actually just cut this down and make it into a smaller pocket. We'll see where we're up to. Actually why don't we do that? That's not a bad idea. If I cut that off there, take this out. So be prepared to amend as Patricia from PM Artist Studio would say. Be prepared to get your pin in the top of glue, Kerry would say. Right, let me just get the guillotine. Excuse the noise. Let's just do a little bit of work on this, right? If I cut this off above the crow, that's nice, I like that. Just come in and put a bit of brown around the edges. bit of vintage photo just tickle that up a little bit that could become another piece of ephemera now I could put a thumb notch in there but I'm not sure should I let's see if I've got a notch small enough for that let's see if I get this in here a little bit of a notch there you go oh it could have been in the middle would have been helpful Let's just make it a little bit bigger and offset it. It'll be fine. So as you can see now, I've just now made myself another pocket from something else. So, right. So this can go in as well. So let me just, out of curiosity, see what we've got here. So we've got one, two... Three, four. Four in the front, and I've got one, two, three. Oh, is that a four? I lost count. See, not focus, guys. One, two, three, four in the back. That's fine. I'm okay with that. I can always add another tuck spot. I'm tempted to put this in here somewhere. Now, this bothers me because I've got this guy's face in a couple of places. I can't remember where I saw him other than that. And I'd quite see he's in two places exactly the same. 
And I think I'd quite like to put this on that page. How close am I to, oh, I'm opposite that one. There's that page gone again. This is all just part of the process, guys. This, this, I know there's one there, but I actually quite like that there. I think I'm going to cover this one up. Yes, cover this one up. Now, I'm, go I'm only going to put this on as that a tuck, but I could have put it on so that there was another tuck spot behind it. Actually, I will put it on as if there's another pocket behind it. That way, there's always options for whoever ends up with this journal. Not sure who's going to get this journal, actually. Sit on there. Give that a press down. Just hold it in place for a few seconds and it should be fine. Why is it I do better putting a pin in with one hand than I do with two hands? Right, that doesn't need to be used. So we've now got all of this. I'm not sure what we'll do with that. We'll keep it as a scrap. So I've got all of this ephemera. So I'm now going to go through and load the pockets. And if there's anything that Blair... Actually, well, I've got this on the mind. Mind. Where's that page with this crow? Right, Tracy Fox labels. Gotta love a Tracy Fox label. Well, I love a Tracy Fox label. Um, again, if you go to Tracy Fox's, um, what am I trying to say? If you go to Tracy Fox's Etsy store, have a look around, guys. There's some wonderful stuff there. Actually, that will do it just on its own. Right. I know it doesn't say witches or anything, but maybe maybe the person owning this journal went to the natural history collection to do some research. Let's get a little bit of... Actually, I can just use that. I don't need to use art glitter glue on this. I can just use regular glue stick. It is on the curve of the spine, which means it could peel up a little bit, but I'm not overly worried. And its little legs are showing, but that actually, you'd have to know what you're looking at to know that there's a pair of legs there. So, right. So, I like that in the front of there, actually. That's, that's a good, good space for writing. I'm still wondering whether to put one of those chalk labels there. Does that look a bit too fanciful? Yeah, it looks looks too planned. Right, first tuck spot. Right. I don't mind that. I'm wondering whether I want something that's a little bit lighter. And maybe something a little taller as well. If I put that one in, and I thought I had a smaller one in here somewhere. Actually, you know what? I think I'll leave that there and see where we get to. As you've seen, I've got more ephemera that I can make up quite quickly. Right, this one is going to be a problem. Well, it's not going to be a problem. I need to find something that will go in there. Actually, I found this. It's a book that had this in it called Crows. And I was going to put it onto a page. Wonder whether I just turn it into some sort of journal card. Bear with me a second, guys. We're just going to do a bit of artistic shenanigans here. It's just, it is quite an old book, so it's going to tear quite well. I think I have to take off the bottom of the scarecrow, but I don't mind that being missing. I don't know who the author is of this. I've got a feeling this is a nursery rhyme or something. I need to take a little bit off the top. Right. Yes, I'm throwing away these little scraps because I've got drawers full of scraps, people. I've got drawers full of scraps. Right, I need to back this onto something. If I put it onto there, will it be strong enough? Probably not. So if there's any craft card hanging around. Right, I've got this, which is a cover, a cover page for a book. 
and actually it's it's a lot more robust. Mm, maybe not robust enough. But I just found this scrap and I think I could probably, if I take it off there, it's going to be big enough. Where's that guillotine gone? And you could write on the back of this. So, so that would fit into there. Where's my crow piece? See, if I backed that on there, that would give me a nice enough piece, but, but it's still, it still looks a bit small. Thinking, guys, thinking, if I take that off there, I've got an idea. Will that fit? In you go. Right, so it needs to be narrower. Right, so that could go in there if I do that. I'll tuck that in a minute. So this could go onto there. I need it to be, that goes back in the scrap drawer. This needs to be inked up a bit. And I don't mind if it gets a bit creased and crinkly like that. In fact, we might do that a little bit more. So it looks like it's a bit of a document or something that whoever owns the journal or the notebook has found. Bit of a gluing page on me though, I feel. Right. I'm just gonna come in and I'm just using glue stick for this because there's no reason not to. Don't rip. Well, actually, don't rip, it doesn't matter if it does rip because it'll just add to the character of it. In the middle of there, just move it up a little bit. Now let's pull in. Where's the spare ephemera gone? I'm wondering whether there's anything here I could add as a strip or a piece down the side. Right, that would work. Right, that's one piece. Now I will back this with some coffee dye paper because obviously that's going to look really wrong. Certainly not going to be in the theme. Is there anything else I want on here? Maybe something up there. I don't really want a crow on a crow. A little bit too much even for me. The same piece? No, I don't want the same piece. Maybe I don't want something up there. She wants that. That's a moth. I wouldn't have a moth on the same thing as that. Maybe that. Right. Just grabbing bits and bobs and dropping glue apparently. Again, just stick. Will you stop dropping things, Griffiths? Pop that on there. I've got a lump under there. I did have a lump under there. Right. Once that's all coffee dyed up, that will look fine. Fold that over. Now, I need to give myself a piece of this the back. Let's actually just glue this down and then I can cut around it. Uh, which is the best back? That there. 
So I think if this is the only piece of ephemera we actually have to make, we will have done quite well. Not that I was trying to avoid making ephemera, I'm not. However, having it all pre-made and made back in June, may I add, which is way, way, way advanced, even for my liking. Right. I'm going to cut this with the scissors because I tear it. The glue is still wet. I know I'm going to have an issue. Yeah, I was going through a nursery rhyme book. I think that's where, where I found this. But I'm sure I found it in a nursery rhyme book. I'll keep those bits. They're obviously useful. Part of me thinks I want to round the corners on this, but part of me thinks no. So you could round the corners if you chose, guys. And that gives more writing space, and that's beautifully grungy on the back. Let's give this a bit of a smooth down. If anyone's asking, this is just part of an old cake smoother. So that can go in there. That sounds like Biscuits heard the postman. OK, I need to pause a minute, guys, and just see what Biscuit's up to. OK, trouble averted. For anyone who doesn't know, Biscuit is actually our Labrador and he likes the postman. He's not trying to get to the postman. He just likes the postman. So... I almost double check because you never know what's going to come through the mail. Um, I accidentally did that and I like that. So that's in there. Moving on. So this one's got a moth on it. And this has got a moth on it. So it's a bit of a tight fit, but I don't mind that. I quite like repeating, repeating things. So I'm not, not worried. Now I'm going through this quite quickly putting stuff in. Are you going to fit? Oh, you're not. Quite quickly, because I can then go back through afterwards and add any extra tags and stuff. Right, so I need something that's a little bigger for there. That's fine. Something a little smaller for there. Why do I feel I want something else in there? We'll, we'll revisit that pocket because I've got a feeling I want something more in that than just that. Right, this one, skulls and skulls. This feels like it may need another thing as well. Right, this one's quite a tall one. That's fine. Well, was this the corner tuck? It was the corner tuck. It doesn't feel big enough to me. It's a bit bigger. Right, we'll revisit that one. I just want to get one thing in each pocket or tuck spot. And then I know that I'm, I'm on, an, on the winning track. Right. There are a few things I did want to do. I wanted to put into this um, coffee dyed paper for actually for people to write upon. So they've got secret little tuck spots. So I'm just gonna tear up these two sheets so that they can then be folded. And I had a feeling, if I remember correctly, I've got some ID cards I made up and I'm wondering whether I want some sort of identification card. Right, a while back I made all of these ID cards. I will put the link to that video in here. And I thought this might be a good thing that you would find in here because he's hunting people down, so he's looking for them. So does anyone look like they could be a witch or a warlock or someone who's up to mischief? Like that could be a scientist. I don't want a whole lot of these in here, but... Just someone who looks slightly dubious, like she couldn't be trusted. Seriously, that woman's up to something. We'll, we'll shortlist them in a minute. Oh, he's obviously something nasty. Right, 
Well, I can't imagine he'd be using pink ones. Well, she looks like a witch. Right, OK, let's put these to one side. Now, I don't want, I'd say, probably two of these in here. So I think, in fairness, let's do him because he looks a bit like a scientist. We wouldn't use something pink. And this, no, she looks like she, she lives in a cottage in the woods. There you go. No insult to people who wear hats and glasses and a pearl necklace. But she looks like she lives in the woods. Right, let's put one in the front and one in the back. How tall are these? But they're not that tall, so that's fine. Find a slot for this little lady. OK, so let's go from the back and see if I can find a slot for the, the mad scientist type guy. Mm, I like it, but I don't like it there. I don't mind that because arsenic and poison could be what he creates. Right, what else do I want to do? Right, let's go page by page. I've got I've got four bits of ephemera here and I've got these pieces of coffee dyed paper that I was thinking. Right, coffee dyed paper can definitely go in there. I'm just going to fold it into thirds and slip that in there. So that's an extra writing space. That's got plenty of writing space. That's got writing space. Writing space. So there is quite a bit in here, actually. I mean, you could come in and stick panels down, as I said. You can do other stuff. Don't think I want to put more in there. See, that's writing space. Right, does this need more? I said it might do. I think I'm going to cut this off. And that's just turned a tag into a journal card because I think the journal card would work better in there. Um, maybe a bit of, actually, I've got this strip of coffee dye paper. That would work in there. Nope, don't like that. Right. Now, you could obviously do so much more with one of these guys. So, so much more than I'm doing. I'm just using up my existing ephemera from the Creep on June or June, yeah, June Creep on, I think it was called. I wanted to use up to actually use it in, in a Tracy Fox one. Let's just tear the edge off that. Just ever so fractionally too small. There you go, that's got that in there. Right, this one is bothering me. If I put some of the coffee dye paper behind it, is it going to be taller if I go that way? Let's just fold that bit up. Fold this in half. And slot that in there. Okay, that gives a little more interest. I'm okay with that. Right, so I'm back to these. Right, that's okay. Let's... Let's think about what can go in here. Deadly handling, that's cool. So this is the way I work a journal, guys. I go back and forth from front to back, front to back. I would like something more in there. I'm not sure what it is yet. I did quite like him when he was in there, didn't I? Maybe leave him there and put something extra in here. I don't want too many of those words together. Let's put the crow in there. This needed one more thing, I think. Actually, that looks very similar to the other one. Let's put that one in there. I like that. Do I need something behind that? I'm wondering whether I want to swap these two because I quite like the word be very afraid up there.
Okay, right. What I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to pause you for two seconds and I'm going to see whether I can find the charms that I had for the year. I'm also going to take the opportunity to take a quick look through my existing ephemera to see if there's anything that I think would sit within this colour scheme, which I very, very much doubt. But I do make an array of ephemera, so I don't actually know what I've got until I've looked. So back in two seconds, guys. So I found the charms I was looking for, which are those two. So let's quickly tie those in place. Um, you don't have to put charms onto a journal. I quite like doing them. Um, sometimes I'll actually use a charm as a bookmark if I wanted to do so. I wouldn't tie it to this. What I would do is I would probably make a strip of fabric and tie a charm at either end of it. And then it's actually a bookmark that can be lifted in and out. So it'll be a strip of say, if it was for this, I'd do something like um, the strip of canvas or, um, I don't know, I'd probably do a fabric thing to be honest on that one. So that's one. I was looking for things like this, like Celtic knots. Not that these are mystical, magical symbols for this journal. They just happen to be in, in the style of, let's put it that way. That's just the way my brain is thinking about these at the moment. So I like to have them so they fall out the bottom of the book as well. Because that way, if you're writing, you're not struggling trying to write over the top of the surface of one of them. I also went through my stash of pre-made ephemera really quickly to see um, what other pieces I had that were in there. And I actually did find a couple. So um, I might need to tickle them up a bit, but I found this, which I think I will say is maybe a Tim Holtz piece. And I think that might be a Tim Holtz piece as well. I found this and I thought if I put one of these pieces of ephemera on there, it will make it more within keeping in this because mushrooms that lot. Um, I found this postcard. I think that's very much in the colour scheme of this. And I found this envelope that I must have made a while ago. And I thought, again, if I put something from the kit on it, then, then that will be a good thing to do. So let's just take those two out of the way, push that up and have a look and see what we think. I mean, I'm immediately drawn to putting the crow there, to be honest. Let's just leave him sat there a bit. All right. It's a case of getting that balance, isn't it, of what you think is right and what you think is not right. Um, and a lot of the time, I don't know what I'm say, uh, talking or thinking about until I actually see it. And I think that's, a, that's with a lot of people who are artistic, you don't know what you're looking for until you find it. Okay, I wonder whether that would go. That's a bit big, isn't it? I keep wanting to use one of the gravestones, but they just don't don't seem to work. Actually, that works there, right? So that's that sorted. See, that just doesn't. It, for some reason, it's not it's not resonating with me. I think I'm going to put the crow on there. I quite like the fact that the little crow's been cut out, and I like the fact that that lines up there. It's all. It just was meant to be. So let's get a piece of paper again and get sticking down. And then I think, guys, we're on the home stretch. I think we're very much almost done. I just put in these last few pieces of ephemera. And as I've got them, I may jiggle a few other pieces around in their stead. Right. Let's press that down. Is it straight? It's as straight as it's going to be in one of my journals. Right, and this here. I must have cut an element off this. I don't I don't know what, what it, maybe I cut a word out of there. I can't quite remember why it looks like that. But it doesn't matter because it looks perfectly good on there. Right, now I could put something in there, but I'm not going to because I think there's enough coffee dyed paper stuffed into here throughout. 
So now we've got some bigger pieces. Now I don't have to use all of them. That That's the good thing. But it does give me some more height on the pages. So this one, if I put that in there, I'm liking that better already. Right, I wonder whether I put... No, let's leave that as it is. Right, this is in here. I don't particularly need to fit anything in behind it. Yeah, there'd be no benefit in putting anything behind that. Anything behind here. It's not quite tall enough. It's probably too wide for the pocket. Why don't you just put this in here? That's good. That gives it a bit of a calmness to that because it looks a bit busy at the moment. So that's a bit of calm there. This. Now, I don't think I can fit anything else in there. Now, what was this? This was... I had no options. I've already done that, haven't I? Right. Are you in shot? I am in shot. Right, this one, I'd quite like to put something in the back of that. I think I quite like that in the back of that. I think these are going to be too wide anyway, except for maybe that tuck spot we put in there. And we could effectively make another tuck spot if I were to do that. I might do that, to be honest with you. Let's just leave those two together because those might become a tuck spot. Like this. I think all these pockets are going to be too small for these. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to get that in there. But that, actually, why am I putting coffee dyed paper on the back of a coffee dyed paper, Griffiths? Why do you say that? I like the idea of sticking a panel down on there because, sorry, Tracy, this is not my most favourite piece of patterned paper. Actually, I might do that. Just come in. Just a light dusting with a bit of vintage photo. I've got a brand new pad over there and I'm slightly apprehensive about opening it because I'm so used to pummeling my my sponge into this one that I think if I started that with a new with a new one I'd have well it would just be a bit of a disaster because everything would be so inky and so juicy I'd end up with stuff all over the place. Do a bit of this. So I think I'll do this on both this one and the other one and I might actually put a little bit of ephemera in the corner um, from the kit just to tie everything in together. Right, so let's put that down on that page. I know I'm out of shot, but to be honest with you, I'm running out of room slightly. There you go, I like that, that's better. So that's given me that. Now let's see if I can find just one thing. Maybe that. Let's put you on there. Just, just to decorate the page up a bit and also to add more journaling space. At the end of the day, his journal is to be journaled. Well, it is in my opinion, but then I suppose you could say a journal can be anything you turn it into, which is also hugely true. Right, there's that other page. I wonder whether I stuck one of these on. Just the bigger. Well, typical, they're both the same size. Now, let's put the coffee dye paper on as planned. I was going to take a piece of that ephemera, turn it into a side pocket, and then stick something else in it. But as we've used all of the actually made ephemera now, it means I'd have to make more ephemera. And we're not going to do that at this point. We're going to use what we've got. Hopefully that's straight. It's always tricky business trying to straighten stuff up when you're looking through an iPad and you can't look directly at the piece. 
I wonder, I've been trying to, yes, we're going to eventually get a tombstone on there. Don't ask me why I've been fixated about putting a tombstone in here, but it was in the kit and I really wanted to use a tombstone. So I think if I put a tombstone there, that's fine. Is that straight-ish? Straight-ish. I wonder if I can put something up there. Maybe they died of poisoning. Let's just put this a little bit too white for this journal. Don't know where I got this from, actually. I'm not sure. Is it in the kit? I can't remember whether that's in the kit or not. I must have found it somewhere. Let's just put on a jaunty angle, should we say. There you go. That's, that's tickled that page up a little bit for me. Right. Where were we? Now, I was thinking that might become another tuck spot. I just wanted to see whether I could fit these in anywhere. Because things like this page needs a something. And I think that's what that needed. It needed more. It needed to break up that darkness of that. We've got another one of those, so I could stick that on there. Well, actually, that might become a candidate for that. So just put that there while I'm thinking about it. For some reason, the back of this feels really empty. I keep thinking this is a pocket. Right, you're annoying me that you're not fitting. Where's that guillotine gone? I will make this work, people. I will make this work. There you go. There's more than one way to deal with that sucker, I can tell you. Right, I think that's where that's going to be, but I just want to do a quick flick to see if there's any blaringly obvious places that I think could do with that instead. Quite like that there, actually. Let's put that there, right? I'm going to add. Now, I know this is a tag, but there are no rules that say I can't use a tag for a tuck spot. Let's just pop that down on there, hold it for a few seconds. Right now. You could obviously go back through this, guys, with all of the spare bits of ephemera and decorate any pages you wanted. I'm going to just do a final flick through now and call this journal done. Um, I think I've achieved what I was hoping to achieve. I was possibly going to put an eyelet into the spine um, and hang a charm from it, but I don't think there's enough room at the top to get it in there. I could actually put one through here to add to the locking device of this or the closure, but again, I don't think I want to. I mean, that's that's quite a nice, a nice meaty journal to put in your hand because you would be adding more to it. Now, I may end up putting ephemera into the back pocket because of course we've got this here with nothing in it. Um, I can't think of anything currently that I want to put into the back of that because I don't think I've got a journal card that actually would work. I just remember this. Now this isn't a journal card, this is actually just a postcard but it's of the right colour and it could be the bits that this whoever owns this journal has travelled. So that's again more writing space. Let's just put, I like to collect postcards. So whenever I'm in a charity shop, thrift shop, goodwill shop, if there's a pile of old postcards or even like one of those boxes of postcards, I will very often pick it up, depending on price, obviously, because they're pretty much made journal cards. If you can find one that fits perfectly into your um, design, then that's fine. I mean, this the colours are not a million miles off what we've been using. That just finishes it off. Right, let's do one last flip through.
and we'll take it from there. Where's the charms gone? So we've got charms there. We've dirtied this up a bit, which is exactly what I was hoping to do. We've already got the built-in closure, which I'm liking, and that holds it quite firmly. You could add more to this as you go along. Maybe if you were going to add things like candy wrappers or trick-or-treats or party invites or stuff. So we've got nice bit of journal space there. Lovely pattern papers from Tracy Fox. All of these have journaling spaces on the back. This one could contain um, maybe party invites. It could have um, coffee dyed paper added to it. You could, in effect, write on this. Again, we made this journal card on screen out of a book out of a nursery rhyme. And that gives you more, more journaling space there. Plenty of journaling space there. You could always do what I did before, stick a coffee dyed panel there, or even something that maybe is, maybe you've got some Halloween-like papers you could put on there instead. Now, I chose very much to put double-sided papers on here because I printed it twice. You could have chosen not to, as I said. You can do whatever you wish here. Just space to stick things down. Plenty, plenty of journaling space all the way through this. I mean, you may not think so, but when you start filling one of these out, you're like, because this is the perfect page. If you want to stick a flip onto it or if you wanted to put a photograph of the kids as they're out doing trick or treat or something, it's a perfect background for photographs. Again, there's one of those old postcards like this is now the tuck spot. You've lost that as a journaling space, but you could actually stick more in there if you wish to it. I like that. That turned out quite nice. I like that. So that gave me another bit of journaling space on this page that I wasn't overly keen on. But now it's just around the edges. I'm OK with that. More writing space, more writing space, more writing space in here. And don't forget, there is another pocket down the back of here. So you could add a further piece if you want down the back there as well. More places. I mean, Halloween is full of trick or treats and kids and parties and dressing up and face painting and all that. Perfect place to put photographs, guys. Perfect place to put photographs. Again, more journaling space all the way through here. You could write on that quite easily. It's just coffee dyed paper. It's not treated in any other way. More journaling space on all of those. Journaling space there. Again, I'd probably put, maybe if there's, if when you're getting closer to Halloween, you see a magazine image of a witch or something, you could easily put that there. Or get, if you've got children, get the kids to draw you some spooky pictures. So I'll put them in here as well. Just memory of them. Um, there's that mad scientist. We missed the witch. She was somewhere else. Bit of writing on there, writing on there. Lovely background papers. I love putting that lace in. That was an alternate to putting a fabric flip into me. If you don't know what a fabric flip is, it's usually um, a flap of fabric or layered fabrics that you lift up. You can then journal underneath and flip it back down again. I just like this. I might do that again in future journals, to be honest. Again, we've got space. You could journal on there. I mean, I probably wouldn't because I'm not keen on that page. More journaling space on all of these. And more journaling space on the back of that. So there you go. That was my Tracy Fox Halloween journal. Um, thank you, Tracy, for the designing the kits. They're absolutely fabulous. Um, all of the links will be in the description box to anything I have mentioned in this video, plus anything I see fit that should go into this. So I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Until next time, bye-bye now.